And now I would like to uh, welcome Signe Elian Tunsberg uh, from the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I don't know if you have a microphone yet, Signe. Otherwise, you can go and uh, you will get one down here. And um, meanwhile, I could say something maybe about the Nordic Baltic cooperation, because I think it's so fantastic that we are here together talking about these issues uh, that are really highly relevant for all of us, uh, but also that uh, this is a great potential, that we are interested in these issues together. And um, I mean, you mentioned a, a program that we have, the Swedish Arts Council Program for Artistic Freedom. Uh, the Norwegian uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, also found some organizations within this program, uh, which is great that we can actually, you know, stand together and uh, take part of the financial burden because once in a while we're not able to finance something and maybe somebody else is standing there at the same time and financing it. Um, this is, so I'm very happy that we have this co cooperation between uh, Norway and Sweden that yes, we're prepared to, to go in and finance this. And, and maybe it doesn't take, I don't think it takes so much courage actually. But it is one kind of action. Yeah, and it's and very important. Yes. Yeah. And with that, I will leave the floor to you and think, let you do your presentation. Thank you, Bongi. Welcome. Thank you. Is this too loud or is it okay? It's perfect. It's fine? Yeah. Uh, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of culture, and artistic creativity. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today at this very important and very, very interesting conference. And thank you also to Lucine and Marita, representing Artists at Risk and the NGO that is protecting Artists at Risk. Ongoing conflicts, polarization, and the backsliding of democracies leads to shrinking of the civic space. Norway continues to pay close attention to freedom of expression, including artistic freedom and cultural rights. The free press, as well as free elections and the rule of law. The Norwegian government's support have a human right-based approach to development. Cultural rights and artistic freedom are under pressure in many countries where artists and cultural professionals are subjected to censorship, discrimination and persecution. The general public are being denied the right to take part in cultural life. Legislations and restrictions are used to suppress and detain artists of all kinds and to censor artistic expression. That's why the protection of freedom of artistic expression is integrated in the strategy for promoting freedom of expression in Norwegian foreign and development policy. This strategy aims to promote and to create safe environments for freedom of speech. A strategic goal is freedom of artistic expression. According to Penn International, in 2022, there were 122 cases worldwide where writers faced harassment, arrests, violence, and even death. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, last year was a dangerous year for journalists, as we know, especially in Gaza where 99 journalists were killed at work, which is a significant increase from the year before. The landscape of oppression is illustrated by the more than 1,200 violations on artistic freedom worldwide 
documented by the organization Freemus in 2021. Among them was a record number of 39 artists who were reportedly killed that year. We can just imagine what the number would be for all the creative voices that are being silenced today. This Sudanese visual artist and political cartoonist, Khalid Albay, says as follows, political suppression, even more than physical danger, is what leads artists to stop creating. All the artists he knew from the time of the Arab Spring are either banned in jail or dead. Fortunately, I'll buy now safe in Oslo through ICON, uh, the network called International Cities of Refugee Network. The arts and culture sector is an important arena for critical thinking and change. Artists and other cultural practitioners can also be human rights defenders, as we already have heard before today. And they must be recognized as human rights defenders. They promote and defend rights. A theatre director from Yendin on the West Bank told me last fall that he does not perform the arts for the sake of the art. He performs to make policy change. If and when artists do not perceive themselves as human rights defenders, they miss out from help by human rights organizations. Or they could. For artists at risk, these organizations can provide emergency protection, relocation, and preventive support, such as psychological support and trainings and advocacy and more. Women artists and cultural protect practitioners and those with a minority background, including sexual and gender minorities, are disproportionately subject to harassment on and offline, persecution and imprisonment because of their work and are often in need of support. There has been more awareness of this problem only in the past few years. Last year, the UNESCO report Defending Creative Voices Artists in Emergency, Learning from the Safety of Journalists was launched at the World Summit on Arts and Culture here in Stockholm. This conference was important in drawing attention to artistic freedom. Norway supports UNESCO with programs in the field of culture, communication and information. The Ashbad program, which we already have heard a little about, for artists and cultural professionals is one. This program supports the implementation of UNESCO's two normative instruments addressing artistic creativity. The 2005 Convention on the Protection and of Diversity of Cultural Expressions and the 1980 recommendation concerning the status of the artist. Over 40 country, countries received support through the OSHPA program last year, through government reform assistance and financial aid to civil society organizations. This program has swiftly mobilized support for artists cultural professionals and cultural institutions affected by emergency situations. Among them, particular assistance has been given to Afghanistan, Sudan and Ukraine. Two projects will be implemented in a crisis context in Yemen and in Palestine. In Afghanistan, 
a rapid assessment of cultural and creative value chains found significant negative impacts since the Taliban's rise to power. Recommendations include creating marketing channels for export and using the diaspora of Afghanistan. In Sudan, the organization Action for Hope and Artists at Risk and more NGOs, uh, they have been supported by the program to help artists affected by the conflict by offering safe workplaces. Norway appreciates that the Ashbei program actively participates in the UNESCO Culture Sector Working Group where culture and creative industries will be strengthened and the diversity of cultural expressions as well as artists and cultural professionals at risk will be protected. The arts, culture and culture heritage are connected. We can't separate the arts from the culture or heritage or vice versa. Almost 4,800 cultural and tourist sites in Ukraine have been damaged or destroyed during the war. The Director General Audrey Osole visited Ukraine in last year to outline the actions in the field of culture, education, and the safety of journalists and to meet national authorities, including President Zelensky. This meeting contributed to the conference about the recovery of the culture sector of Ukraine, which took place last week in Vilnius. Nearly 30 states, uh, including some represented here today, supported the Vilnius call for action to the recovery of Ukraine's culture sector. Then UNESCO declared, there can be no healing of wounds of war without culture. There can be no sustainable growth and prosperity without culture. The status of artist is important for strengthening the economic and the social rights that are enshrined in the UNESCO World Forum of Cultural Policies, Mandia Cult 2022 Declaration. We are looking forward to following up on the work of the next Mandia Cult, which will take place next year in Barcelona. Then the first ever global report on the state of culture will be presented. By fostering better working and social conditions for artists and cultural professionals, the work is in line with the Norwegian policy with a contribution to decent employment opportunities, gender equality, reduced inequalities, and a focus on peace, justice, and strong institutions. In a vibrant democracy, Everyone can safely take part in the free exchange of views and ideas and influence social development. An open dialogue where the opinions can be pitted against each other helps promote democracy and safeguard human rights. A cornerstone of human rights, the freedom of expression is a prerequisite for democracy. A vibrant, diverse cultural sector is dependent on freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and human creativity. That's why Norway appreciates to have contributed through UNESCO programs, including the Oshberg program for artists and cultural professionals. Norway will continue to actively promote artistic freedom and cultural rights. On behalf of the Nordic countries, Norway is a candidate to UNESCO's Executive Board 2025. 
in order to sustain and increase the impact of the OSHPAD program, Norway welcomes more countries and partners to help us reinforce this work even further through financial contributions and strategic partnerships. I will end by inviting others to join Norway in supporting the OSHPAD program to empower creativity and defend creative voices worldwide. Thank you for your attention. With this, with this very late. Did I, did I forget anything? Bonga? I don't think no. so. <laughs> I think you have said everything. It's really good also to get this picture of what can UNESCO do and what can we as Nordic Baltic countries also do together within. And we also actually work closely together and, and also with you in the audience yeah. uh, within the 2005 convention and with Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, always taking up the issue of artistic freedom yeah. uh, for the 2005 convention. And um, I think we're very strong together. Yeah, we are. We are very strong together. <laughs> yes. I, I'm agreeing uh, so much with you. And I think uh, the last few years, uh, the focus uh, on artistic freedom has uh, been uh, much uh, more seen or listened to mm. than for maybe four or five years ago. Yes. So something ha has Just happened in time. And, uh, that's inspiring. Yeah, we're starting to wake up, basically. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you so much, Signe. And I would like to wake up, uh, welcome up.